record. Thank you, Jeff. Um, yeah, my name is Jerry Lee, the life science specialist. Um, today we'll be touching um, the um, software installation on Sakai. So um, before we start, uh, we would like to acknowledge that uh, the University of British Columbia um, are located on traditional ancestral and unceded territory of Musqueam people and Silix people. Um, be uh, because we have um, like lots of contents today, I will uh, go quickly about the um, for the housekeeping. So um, um, this is the, um, because this is a webinar form, so you're muted automatically when you um, enter the room and um, the web webinar is recorded. Uh, we will let people know once um, they are online. And um, please go to uh, the second um, link, the OSF page. Um, uh, because there are um, the slides there and also some commands you may need to copy and paste fr from there. And um, if you have any questions, you can raise your hand, um, either virtual hand or physical hand, um, or you can post the questions in um, Q&A sessions. So um, if you have an... Um, it's assumed that you connect to um, Sokai if you haven't uh, connected um, for now, um, please connect um, to Sokai um, as soon as possible because we are going to do some hands-on um, practice um, in Sokai. So if you have any questions or um, regarding uh, connecting to Sokai, um, please feel free to reach out to us. And we um, appreciate, we will appreciate if you um, can um, Put your comments, your suggestions, and your feedback in our um, survey, uh, which can be found in our OSF page. Okay, so today um, for the software installation, we will have um, three um, sections. In the first section, we will um, introduce um, the software environment in Sokai, uh, which means the software already installed in Sokai. And set in the second section, we will um, try to introduce the um, different methods of um, installing software. And uh, we hope people to um, uh, get some ideas when to load the existing software, when to install software, and when to use the um, containers. Okay. So uh, software um, environment in, um, in Sokai. We will first talk about the um, operating system in Sokai and, and then the software installed in Sokai. So in this diagram, you can see there are a bunch of operating systems. Some are, um, you, you, are, you may be familiar with some, some of them like Windows, Windows 10, uh, Linux, Ubuntu, um, Android, iOS. Um, so basically the idea is that, um, every, so, um, the Sokai system um, is kind of derived from Unix. And then um, people, uh, based on Unix, pe uh, people developed um, a free source version, uh, which is called Linux. And then people use this Linux um, to develop some other like um, operating system, including Android, which is in your maybe uh, um, mobile phone. Ubuntu, um, maybe you heard about this name, and CentOS. So Sokai is, um, the operating system um, in Sokai is called CentOS, which is uh, one distribution, one Linux distribution, and the version is number seven. Um, so except Linux, uh, based on Unix, uh, other people develop some other software, uh, operating system, which include uh, the iOS and Mac OS. So uh, if you are using MacBook, uh, you may find that the, uh, the folder structures, the names are quite similar with uh, the, uh, those in Sokai. However, you can see there's no connection between Windows and uh, Linux. So if you are using Windows, you will, you will find that um, the uh, folders and layouts are quite different. Okay. So um, 
as a user in Sockeye, there are some, some directories or some folders you can access to, uh, which you may have some ideas uh, in the first two, ses uh, uh, first two sessions. Uh, so these include your home directory, um, uh, which is slash home slash dollar user, uppercase user. Um, but yeah, if you are not familiar with this dollar um, uppercase user, we will um, talk about this later. Um, and you, that's your home directory. And uh, you also have access to your project space, which is the, which is the second one on the right, slash args pro, slash project slash um, allocation code. And uh, the third one, of course, is your scratch space. Um, so there are some, some uh, uh, I should say, all of the others, fold, all, the, all of the other directories and folders, um, for those you don't have access to, uh, which include slash user, slash bin. So these two are usually well the um, binary executable files. Um, Located such as the uh, original Python, original Perl in uh, in system in, in the system, and you don't have access to slash software, which is where we install the software in Sockai, and you don't have the um, slash lib slash lib sixty four, which is the library like like Python library uh, we installed in Sockai. And you don't have a slash include. You don't have access to a slash include, which is the header files um, of C in 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 Sockai. So that means um, you don't. You cannot um, install the program centrally in Sockai. So this brings. Um, Three challenges when you try to use um, some some programs or some software in Sockeye. So the first one is that you may not you may be not familiar with um, uh, the operating system because it's Linux. If you uh, if especially uh, if you are um, using Windows and you are comfortable with that, then you may find that the folder structures and uh, is quite different. And the second is uh, you may be um, not very familiar with the command line system. Uh, even you are using a MacBook, if you only um, use the graphic interview and the mouse cursor um, to the, the mouse to move around, um, you may not be um, quite comfortable in using Sockeye because it's only a command line. It, on, it only has command line interface. Um, and the third one, which is the most tricky part, um, you don't have the admin power. So unlike your personal computer, uh, when you, so in your personal computer, if you want to try, uh, if you want to um, install something, you just download the uh, installation package and double click. Um, but in Sockeye, you don't have that power. So you, you have to find some other ways to, to, do, to install the program. So that's what we want to show you um, today. Okay, so first, um, software installed in Sockeye. Um, so there are a bunch of software that are already available in Sockeye. Um, of course, we cannot install everything, um, but there are some most commonly used ones, uh, such as Python, um, some Python package like NumPy, um, PyTorch, um, uh, TensorFlow, some, something like that. Um, and of course, CUDA, um, which um, Jeff mentioned in the morning. Um, so I'm going to move to my terminal. So if you haven't connected to um, to Sockeye yet, please um, connect now um, because um, from this slide, we are going to do some hands-on practice. So now I'm in Sockeye. You can see this giant fish um, and to to check first to check whether um, we have um, a program installed um, or whether the system has this program, we can run two commands. So the first command is which and followed by the program name. So if I want to check Python, I can do which Python. And if we tell like if it prints something, then that means um, there's um, there's a certain program installed. 
And in this case, it looks like if I type Python dash dash version, uh, you can see it's only 2.7.5, which is pretty old. That's because um, the soft, uh, the um, system is um, based on CentOS 7. Um, that uh, this version is called, is not very new. So this Python 2.7.5 is um, the default Python uh, embedded in this operating system. Um, so if we want to, that's the first way. And the second way is to run another command called module spider. So if you type M O D U L E module space S P I D E R spider space and followed by the, uh, the program name, in this case, Python, it will show a list of Python followed by its versions. So you can see we have two Python versions available in the system as a module. Um, the first one is 3.7.10. The second one is 3.8.10. So we can simply, if you, um, press space, then you can go um, go to the bottom of this page. Um, okay, so if you want to load, if you want to use this, uh, for example, 3.8.10, we can do M module again, space, L-O-A-D, space, module load, and Python slash 3.8.10. Point eight, point ten. So just copy and paste if you want. Um, so it doesn't report anything. Nothing happens. But actually, it, uh, the this Python is already loaded. So if I type which Python again, and it's different from what we saw here. I, instead of this short path, it comes with a very long path. And you can see it's it's under R, slash arc slash software, which means we installed um, in the system. And if we type pi um, dash dash version again, and it shows now it's 3.8.10. So that's how you um, load the software installed in, in Sockeye. Uh, it's this, I want to, um, one thing I want to mention is that this module spider Python, um, this Python is kind of a keyword. Uh, you don't have to like um, include every letter uh, of your program. So if I, for example, if I do, if I remove N, and press enter, it still comes out with Python 3, um, 3.8, 3.8.10. So it will search every um, software that includes P-Y-T-H-O. So it's searching by, um, searching with, um, with keywords, not the exact name. So if I don't need this um, Python 3.8.10 anymore, I can simply run module space. Instead of load, we put unload here and space. Then Python 3.8.10. Okay, so it didn't tell us, uh, report anything. So that means no error. And if we type which Python again, you can see we are back to version 2.7. Yeah, that's how to load the software installed uh, in Sockeye, uh, which is simple. So um, actually when you log into Sockeye, there are a bunch of um, software already loaded for you. 
automatically. So you can type module list to see what you have for now. So uh, it can include some something like Open BBS, um, GCC. We, we, uh, it's not the uh, focus today. It, the, uh, what I want to um, show you guys is that if you load a bunch of uh, modules like Python, R, Perl, um, then you can use this module list to list all of the modules you already loaded. If you don't remember, if you load, load a lot. And there's another command uh, used for, for you guys to use. Uh, the software is module space avail. Uh, it, you can see it lists lots of program, um, C, make, beast, and uh, um, behind it, it has some, um, some letters or words that uh, show the disciplines like BIO is the biology, um, math is ma um, mathematics, and there's some chem chemistry. So you can see the, what does these means in the, um, at the bottom. So if, if you keep, uh, keep pressing space, you will, um, you'll get to the bottom of this page. So if you, but this list is not comprehensive. Um, we, uh, in our TUD, in our documentation, we have the, the, the list. Um, okay. So, but the easiest way is just use module spider to search whether your software is already there. If I, uh, if you didn't get anything, then that means you have to install by yourself or ask us to install it. Oh yeah. So module and software package or program is similar, is the same thing. So so any program that's installed, it's the command module that, that tells you that, right? Uh, it's the command uh, module spider, spider to search it. Uh, so for example, if I want to see whether I have NumPy, uh, doesn't have. <laughs> okay, so about. So if I, you want to search all of the Py, Python module, um, there's a bunch of them. <laughs> yeah, my question was module and mm -hmm. software program, they're the same thing, they mean the same thing. Uh, in this case, um, it, it's a little bit different. So module uh, could have one software, it can have a bunch of software, for example, um, to use an R package, you need R first, right? Yes. And you may you to use this package, you may need to install some other uh, packages as uh, dependency. So uh, if you search for this package and you load it as a module, then this module contains everything. But if I want a library in R, I, I can search. I can I can search by the name of the library. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So Jerry. Oh. Avail, um, Jerry? Jerry? Uh, yeah. So um, Jeff Moon was asking if you could or someone could repeat the question before oh. providing the answers. That would be <laughs> helpful thought. because uh, the online audience couldn't hear them. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, thanks, uh, George. Um, thanks, Jeff. So um, the question is um, whether module means, uh, module and software or program means the same thing. And the answer is, um, module actually includes at least one software because sometimes the software needs some other software to be installed first as dependencies. So um, if you load that software as a module, it actually includes every dependency. Okay. Yeah. yeah, Jeff? So I just wanted to add to the, um, Maybe you your question here. in that. <laughs> they can roughly be thought of as synonymous in that these are all software modules. Some of them are combinations of things, but many of them are um, are standalone. So you can look Maven at the bottom left. It's software, it's a module. So a module load, Maven loads that software. So that they can be thought of as pretty synonymous in that respect. Yeah, yeah Jeff, Jeff just explained uh, in this screen that um, uh, you can see some of them are like kind of 
um, package or library. Some of them are programs, program names like MATLAB. So uh, it could be um, a program itself. It could be a package, including its dependencies. Okay, so uh, back to our slides. Um, Jeff showed this uh, in the morning. So we have, a to use the module, we have a bunch of um, commands. Sorry that, Jerry, oh. sorry for the yeah. interruption. Uh, I saw you moving on to another, um, another like topic we have two outstanding questions okay okay yeah let me check uh is there any uh mm -hmm. i neural image i know there there is some um um software that um can analyze um fmri um images like uh, free surfer um installed in uh, in sokai um but i'm not sure whether that's what you want um however for um for bioinformatics um programs um in most cases you can install um using either condor or singularity singularity container which i will show later in this um in this session uh or um if they cannot be installed by that method, you can definitely uh, bring that um, software to us and we can install it um, centrally. Uh, what we try to do is uh, to encourage people to install by themselves because if it's only one user, uh, that can make kind of C drive <laughs> be, uh, more and more um, busy and uh, which can slow down all of the um, analysis. So if uh, people can install, if only one user is using that tool, we encourage people to install by themselves. But if um, it cannot be installed or it's really tricky, then we, we are happy to install it centrally. So just write us an email. Um, sometimes uh, some bioinformatics um, software is no, not open source. Um, so um, in that case, you may need to purchase a license and bring the license to us. So we can install the program in a century and then um, restrict only you to use it. So well, that's a different story. Uh, it won't be covered in this session. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I'll just speak up so you picked up in the camera or in the microphone, sorry. So some neuroimaging software like FSL and FreeSurfer, um, we don't, I believe, have them installed as modules but they are fairly straightforward uh, local installs in your project directory. And um, Jerry will cover a little bit about that today, but at the same time, um, we're more than happy to work with you to install that in your project directory. But we do have quite a few people using um, neuroimaging software on Sockeye. Thank you, thank you, Dan. Yeah. Okay, so uh, back to the slides. Um, this table uh, lists some um, commands that you may find um, useful to when you load load the or use the module. So the module list will list all of the uh, modules that you already loaded. Uh, the module load is how to load the module and module avail. We just show um, we just saw the um, the 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 outputs and um, and more and also module spider. So the last three we haven't touched um, from the um, from the uh, the first one module save uh, is actually save all of the uh, modules you already loaded into um, a name, for example, uh, module list one. So um, next time, we, because if you re-log in, you lose all of the modules loaded, right? To uh, quickly recover all of these modules, you just run the second last one, module restore, uh, my module list one. Then you recover everything. And module purge is to purge every module you just you loaded in this session. Um, so uh, it's not necessary, I, I want to say, because you, you can just, re-log in, just uh, close the window and reconnect to Sokai. That will purge everything as well. Um, 
And also the, the other two module save and module restore, if you are not like loading like dozens of module, modules at the same time, which I don't think that uh, very commonly, uh, very, don't think that's a very common case. Um, these two are not um, that useful. You may not need it. It's, it's convenient, but not essential. Okay, so. Jerry, um, yeah. Sorry, another question. If I install FSL, for example, in my project folder, can other users in my lab use it? Yeah, it depends on. Uh, yeah, it depends on uh, how you install it. Um, so, if you are using Condor and you, if you use the um, the absolute path instead of the soft link, you just created uh, like one uh, yesterday. Um, it can be shared by um, the team members. I mean, uh, users in the same allocation. Or if you are using um, Singularity Container, you can uh, share it with your um, team members. So if you compile it um, from the source code, which uh, I will show you um, later, um, in most cases, you um, other people cannot use it. Yeah, we will be touching um, that topic. Although I won't use FSL as an example, I will use some very simple ones. Um, so, okay, so next, um, this is what I just show you guys, uh, which Python and, um, and we can see that before you load, um, you do module load Python, and after you do module load Python, you get different results by which Python. And this is because module load is not only like call the, um, the software installed in Sockeye, it also change something. In this case, it's called dollar sign uppercase parse. So if I do echo, dollar sign, uppercase path. You can see it's quite long. Um, and uh, it means the system will search for the programs in these folders. So the first folder starts from the first slash until the first colon. And the second one will be from slash cm to the second co colon. So it actually it actually represents multiple um, folders or directories. Um, when you do module load, you actually add the software, the path of the software into this dollar sign uppercase parse. And this this um, dollar sign uppercase parse is called um, environmental variable and to there are some very common ones including uppercase home uppercase path uppercase user and uppercase tmp dir so uh, we're going to um, talk about um, dollar user and dollar home today um, so if you do e c h o which means print um, dollar sign home, you should get slash home slash your CWL. So this is, this variable has some value and this value is different from uh, for each person. And this value should be the directory of your home, uh, home space. And if you do ECHO space dollar user, it should be your CWL username. Because when you log into Sockeye, the username you input is your CWL. Right? So this, these two are uh, simple examples. Um, there are some other um, variables that could be very useful. For example, where you, uh, where you um, store the Python package, where you store your R package. So that could 
where you store your uh, C library, that could be uh, more advanced. Um, but um, these are all um, variable uh, environment variables, which um, has this dollar sign in front and all letter uppercase. Okay, so let, let me see whether there's any question. Um, seems good. Okay, so um, that's how to use the software installed already. Um, so it's relatively easier because you just need to do module spider to search and module load to load them. However, in most of the cases, you won't be able to find them in like your, um, the software you want to use in the system. So in this case, you have to install them by yourself. And remember, you don't have the pseudo, uh, uh, the system admin power as you um, do for your personal computer. So that will make things uh, much uh, trickier. Um, in general, there are four ways. Um, in general, there are four ways to um, install your um, program. So first is to download the pre-compiled binary executables. It, these terms might be very confusing to, pe uh, to some people, um, but um, it's more like you go to the Best Buy and purchase a TV. So there's some, something already like installed for you and you just grab it and put it in your directory and you can simply use it. Uh, you don't have to like assemble a TV like uh, to uh, or uh, make a TV by yourself. Um, you just grab it from Best Buy. And the second uh, way is to download the source code and compile it in your allocation. Um, so this is more like um, you go you want to uh, get a bed for your for your bedroom. Um, you don't uh, you go to IKEA to um, get all of the pieces of the bed and then you uh, take it to your home and then assemble it by yourself. Um, but actually it's not Ikea, uh, let's say it's a Ukea because uh, in this case, it's not like, like Ikea uh, the, because the, in Ikea you have the kind of standardized, a uh, standard um, in, uh, tools to assemble those, uh, those pieces. But in our case, when you try to uh, download uh, source code and compile it in your allocation, the tools, you even have to assemble the tools first. And the tools are not like in a standard, um, um, it, they are not the, they're not the same, they're different. The different tools, uh, different software needs different tools to assemble. So you have to find the right tools. And sometimes you can not even find the tools. You have to assemble the tool first. So that's why it's not IKEA. It's more complicated. Um, and the third way is to use the virtual environment such as Condor to install the tool uh, the, or the program. So this is more like uh, you want to have, you, still you want to um, have a bed in your bedroom. You hire someone uh, whose name is Condor. Um, and this guy is a professional. It, um, uh, this guy goes to um, IKEA, Home Depot, and or Amazon to find the find the um, the best uh, bed for you that can fit your room. Because you may have the, your desk beside, you may have your um, your nice stand uh, in the room already. Uh, it has to match the space. Uh, so this guy will take will measure the space for you and try to find the correct one. And if you cannot find the correct one, so for example, I, I, I need a king size bed, but your space is too small. Um, he has to find like change the current desk to a smaller desk. So he will sell the desk and then get the sm smaller desk for you. So this is kind of a dependencies of the software you want to uh, install. So this guy can do everything for you. Um, which is more convenient and you don't need to pay for that. Uh, the fourth one is install or use the tools in a singularity container. So uh, the singularity container is more like a capsule room in, a, in the house uh, because uh, the third method, you have a professional guy um, to help you to um, get the bed. 
But remember, you are not the house owner. You are just a user of Sockai. So you cannot uh, change uh, like these basic stuff, like the wall color. You don't, you cannot like repaint the wall. You cannot put, uh, like change the wallpaper. Uh, you cannot change the layout, general layout. But I, for example, I still want a pink, <laughs> pink wall. How to do that? Um, to get a, so the easiest way is to get the container, which is similar to a capsule um, room. So in this capsule room, you can like do everything. Uh, you can have different wallpapers, you can different lights. Um, however, please remember it's you use uh, the hardware of the soft uh, system, like the waters, like the electricity. So you still have to connect this capsule uh, room to the uh, to these hardware. Okay, so um, this slide is just um, rephrase what I said a minute ago. So it's for you guys to um, check it later after the courses. So I will skip that. And, um, and this slide uh, summarized the pros and cons of each method. So the first one, download, uh, like, like get the TV from Best Buy. The pros is obvious, simple, fast, but um, it's only available for a few software. For most of the cases, you cannot find it. Um, and second method, uh, it works like download the source code and um, compile it. Um, it works for it works for most of the software, but it's very complicated to do it. So you need to get the tools first and find the. Uh, correct screw and find the correct screwdriver and you don't have the screwdriver you have to assemble a screwdriver first so that's very complicated and third um use a virtual environment just like hire someone to do it for you um the the prompts is easy to install work for most of the software but the um there's some um caveats which uh, because it can generate a huge number of files in the system um like if you um, use this um, a virtual environment uh, quite heavily, then you may slow down the system. It will generate lots of files in your project space or your home, home directory. So it your account will become slower and slower. Um, and the fourth method, um, install or use the tools in a singularity container, the capsule uh, room. Um, it also works for most software and it doesn't rely on the system environment. It doesn't matter whether the um, the wall is pink or white or black even. <laughs> um, so um, it, it even can it can even work in different Linux distribution. For example, if you have a container, it works in Ubuntu, it works in uh, Red Hat, it works in CentOS. So, um, because it doesn't rely on the uh, operating system, like the higher level of operating system in in the system. Um, however, um, to fully use it, to fully control it, or to um, like have a better control of your container, because sometimes you want to make some decoration of that container, you just simply uh, get it and use it. Um, you need a personal computer with a Linux system. Otherwise you cannot touch inside. So you can just use it. If you want to like change something inside the container, you need a Linux machine and you have the admin power of that machine to change it. So it's not very easy for beginners. We will um, just show the, like the easiest uh, user case today. Um, okay, so, so far any questions? Did I confuse people? Uh huh. Uh, number one is just um, it, the program is already compiled. It works for Linux uh, system. So uh, let me think. Um, so uh, if you um, 
if you search Google for some hello world.c, <laughs> it's kind of a source code. If you compile it, it becomes a binary file. You can run it. So if you if someone has already compiled for you, you got the uh, hello world, you just download hello world, oh, you, you still can use it. Um, and for bioinformatics, if you uh, the best uh, example would be Blast, the local Blast. So you just need to download, unzip it. Oh, I see what you like. You can download. Yeah, like, it, you can download soft. You can download like software is like double click and open it. Yeah, so if it's something that's kind of like you know, this is a library that I'm gonna yeah. like. It's a library I'm gonna pass. Like, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Everyone can use it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the second is the same thing. If you um, usually, um, you download the source code, you, com uh, you, you compile it, and you make it. And uh, the last step is usually make install or see make install. But if you, you can, uh, usually you can um, determine the directory you want to install by prefix or uh, some other um, method. So, um, so in that case, you, um, if you, um, assign those um, directory into your project space or your scratch space, then it doesn't have um, issue to install. Uh, because in default, it would be, it would go to um, slash user local bin, something like that. <laughs> if you don't touch those places, uh, instead you go to your project space, then it should be fine. Uh, let me see the Q&A session. Okay, so um, okay, let's try to quickly practice some the first method. Um, so if you open a browser and type this osf.io slash e phi c h f and enter. So that will be the OSF page of um, this course. And if you move down, you can find the, um, the slides here in PDF version, but we're not going there, <laughs> sorry. Um, if you move a little bit above, there's a read more. If you click on that and if you scroll down, these um, are the commands that I show um, in the slides. Um, we encourage people to like copy and paste from here because in PDF or um, PowerPoint or Word, it does some weird auto formatting. Um, sometimes you like the, for example, the indentation um, is not show up when you copy and paste. So it can cause trouble. So if you want to copy and paste, please um, do it from here. Uh, what we need to do is this line. So first we go to the home directory. Uh, I'm going to go back to my slides because this page is really big uh, and turn on my terminal. So CD space dollar home uppercase. So that will bring you back to your home directory. Um, and if you type PWD, so it should be slash home slash your followed by your CWL. And in here, we make a new directory MKDIR space named Kause. Um, the cow want to, wants to say something. So, um, and then say the, how uh, of course you can um, press tab uh, to be a lazy person. <laughs> uh, now, if you type PWD, you should be at slash home slash um, CWL slash Kelsey. Okay. So then you go back to this OSF page and copy this line and paste here. 
it should be pretty fast. So if you type ls, you should have a file here. And then let's go back to my slide. So um, this file has an extension file name, um, dot tar dot gz. Uh, it means this file is a zipped file. So the first step, we need to unzip it. Uh, to unzip, we type tar space dash xf and cal press tab because there's only one file here. Uh, I'm not going to explain the what does this dash x dash rf mean. Uh, if you are interested, you can just search it in Google. Uh, it's a pretty um, common um, command and press enter. So now if you do ls, you should have a cow say here, uh, the file you just download, the cow thing here, the license, the readme. So to use it, you can type dollar sign home, cow say, and cow say, uh, follow space, followed by anything you want, want the cow to say. For example, hello. <laughs> so the cow will say hello to, to you. Um, so yeah, so the, it shows that this program is very simple and um, you can just download it. But unfortunately, not every program is like that. Um, That'd be great if, if every program can, can do that way. So it, this is the method one. And if you, you can see uh, to run it, I, I include this dollar home slash cow say before I run this cow say hello. So if you type, it tells you cow say command not found. That's because um, this directory, dollar home, cow say, this directory is not in the list where our system is looking for the program. And that list is stored in dollar uppercase part. So it's here. So you can see that this list doesn't have that. So if you do export, Parse no dollar sign equals to home cow say colon dollar sign parse. So we redefine the parse by adding this dollar home to in front of the current parse and press enter. Then if we do cowsy hello again, it can find this cowsy. So it won't report um, the command not found error again anymore. But you have to do it every time when you log in, unless you put it somewhere to let it start uh, automatically. Oh, go ahead, please. <laughs> so every time I log in, my path gets reset to what it originally was? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you can store in something in a file. I will show you later. Uh, that 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 is uh, automatic automatically run every time when you log into to to Sokka. Yeah. So when you use that export path, uh, when you write that line, is is it adding home to um, the existing path environment variables, or is it replacing whatever is there with like just home now? So if you if you type echo path again like what oh have? oh yeah, yeah so um the question is whether uh whether this uh command just adding something or replace the whole thing so actually it's replacing the whole thing with this part but this part is this guy plus this guy so dollar path behind already has everything inside right so you replace the um the path with dollar home slash cowsy and 
current dollar part. Oh. So if I print dollar path again, you can see that uh, my home directory slash cow say is in front of is in, um is the first one. Oh. Yeah. It's, if I make a mistake and if I put the dollar path first and then the new one, it doesn't matter. Does the order, is the order important? Or uh, when you do the export path, is it okay if I do equals path or dollar path first and then colon dollar home? Uh, if you don't include this guy, you will lose everything here which means you cannot find the program installed in Sokai. And I don't think uh, people want to do that. <laughs> no, 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 I, I know. What I was saying, if I make a mistake and if I put the dollar path first and uh -huh. then the colon and then dollar home and then you can, can it be add the house on the end? Oh, like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but um, this order, uh, actually has some meaning for um uh, sometimes it's meaningful when you um try to find some libraries uh, because it searched for the first one first like and then the second one and then the uh, third one so uh i don't remember whether it goes uh, reverse or from or or forward but i need to double check but it, um it will overlap so it Sometimes it, it's uh, you may see some errors uh, related to that. Um, okay. So because if sometimes you want you have multiple versions of Python, for example, installed in mo different directories, and if you load them together, if you put them all in path, then you can only load one, right? <laughs> Because Python, it always starts with Python something, right? If you run a code, um, then the this Python refers to uh, the first Python you installed or the second Python you installed, right? So it it will it can only pick up one Python, and the order actually de determines which which Python you finally load. Yeah, but it, uh, it you don't need to worry too much about that. Uh, uh, for now, because uh, that's for advanced <laughs> people. Um, when you get uh, familiar with the system, um, like after a few um, attempts, then you you will be more comfortable to um, play with it. But because you just need you just need to uh, reconnect to Sokai to make everything reloaded. Oh, so. I think we need a five minutes break and let's come back to a Can I ask a question, Jerry? Oh, yeah. So um, the question is, is CVFMS going to be covered as a software repo? Uh, if you, if you um, load it in um, the Alliance or Compute Canada, you, you actually see that in part. Like you, if you load um, the any software, because they are installed there, right? Going to move my slide.
Okay, welcome back. Um, so um, in this, in the next session, we will talk about how to, the method to how to download the source code and compile it um, in your allocation. Um, you don't have to like do practice because this, um, you, uh, I don't think you have many chances to use this method. Uh, I will show a demo um, for this section. Um, so again, I'm going back to my home directory first and module load GCC, uh, which is for compiling Git, which is for downloading GitHub, CMake, which is also for compiling. Um, and then git clone and go back to the OSF page. So scroll down and copy that. Uh, again, you don't have to follow, uh, like do practice for this one. I'm just showing, showing you guys. Okay, so now uh, you will see this CMake Hello World uh, folder downloaded to your um, home directory. And then if we, then to install it, we let's go back to their GitHub page. So this is their GitHub page. Usually they will have, have some instructions how to, how to install it. Okay, so installation, first method, sudo apt get install cmake. So we don't have sudo, we, we are not an uh, admin. Uh, we cannot use apt get because we are sent OS, <laughs> we are not uh, Ubuntu. So this command is for Ubuntu. Um, and, uh, and see, oh, they want to make, uh, install CMake, but we actually have CMake already loaded. So we don't need to worry about that. Uh, and next step is make a builder file, a builder folder and go to the build folder and do CMake uh, and make and make install. Let's try. Um, okay. So let's go to CMake directory. And then first one, make a directory called build. And then go into the build and CMake. And just copy and paste. Uh, it may take some time. Oh, it's actually quick. <laughs> okay, it's done. So then last step, make install. Oh, we got an error here. So it says file install cannot copy file from here to here. Permission denied. That's because slash user is um, the where you don't have access to. So you cannot write some things to that directory. Only the system admin can, can do that. So how to resolve that? Um, let's go back to the slide. So let's go to the second attempt. So we can see that the only, only the last step failed because it trying to copy this file to somewhere we don't have access, uh, permission to. So let's just change it, uh, the, the destination to some, to your project space or your home directory. Okay, so um, let's do CMake. This is the same, but with dcmake underscore in store, underscore prefix equals to dollar pwd, which means the current directory. So that dollar pwd is the is the path of the current directory, and we redo the um, we reset the cmake, and then type make, and then type make install. Okay, it looks good, no error. But to run it, we need to run. So where is it? It's under 
the current directory. So you can see there's a bin here. So under bin, there's a CMake hello world. So we need to run this. Um, so the current directory bin C make Okay, so now it works. Um, but if we only type say make hello world, again, command not found. So the reason is that we don't have this directory or path in the dollar path variable. And so we can do this again. So export. So we edit this path again by put the current directory followed by slash bin, right? Add to the, the front. And then we run this again. Now it works. So um, this is the simplest uh, example. Uh, in real world, um, for most of the software, it could be very, very complicated because when you try to compile, you may find the, oh, this uh, this file is not found. That file is not found. We The version is uh, is too old. So there are all types of problems. Um, and um, and it's also frustrating to, uh, when you try to program A, it needs B, and then B needs C and D, and D needs E and F. So this can, um, takes could be very time consuming. So that's why. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, go ahead, please. Uh, the uh, one level up. Yeah. Uh, the question is what does this uh, two dots mean uh, in? Uh, here. The two dot means uh, one folder level up. Okay, so that's why we recommend number three and number four um, for um, software installation. So number three is using um, virtual environment. Um, there are two um, like common virtual environment um, uh, tools or managers. Uh, one is called virtual EMV. Uh, we are not going to touch this because, um, yeah, we, we don't have that, that much time. Um, it works in um, the Alliance cluster. So there's a documentation which is very well written. You can just copy and paste and to play with it. Um, and we're going to uh, touch uh, this counter because it Right. because it works in Sockeye, but not in the Alliance cluster. So it's kind of Sockeye unique. Um, okay, so in general, to use Condor, you have six steps. So first, install Condor. Second, activate Condor. Third, um, create an environment. Fourth, run the tools with Condor in a job, and then generate a reproducible workflow with Condor. Then the the last section where we'll talk about best uh, some best practice. Hey, so um, please get ready <laughs> to type something. <laughs> we have lots of letters here. Uh, okay, so first let's do make directory slash arc arc slash project and type ptr dash boot camp dash one. So that's our project space, if you remember. And slash software, you can you can press tab um, to, oh, to make magic happen. <laughs> uh, and then dollar uppercase user. and press enter. Okay, so then go to this directory, just um, press the upper arrow 
and then um, the left arrow to here and change make directory to cd change directory okay now if you type pwd it should be slash arc slash project um, tr dash bootcamp dash one software installation slash followed by your cwl um okay here we try we first need to uh, build a new folder down low so make directory download and press enter Okay, then we go into this place. And we go back to our OSF page, scroll down to here. Section four, install tools in a virtual environment. Copy and paste. So we are trying to um, download the Miniconda 3 installation package. It should be done in a second. Okay, and then let's go back to the slide. So if you type LS, you should have Miniconda 3 latest Linux um, x86 underscore 64 sh in your folder and then type BASH and press tab to get the full name. So bash the file name and press enter. Um, it asks you to press enter to continue. So uh, if it's more than press space, Space, space. So it's the uh, it it's the license. So do you accept the license terms? Uh, I have no choice. It must be yes. Okay. And then um, it asks you where you want to install Miniconda. Uh, I'm not going to change it because that will make things complicated. So just uh, the default is your home directory Miniconda three. So I'm just type enter. And it will install the um, package there. Uh, however, when you, um, if you have lots of programs or environments to create, we recommend you um, install it in your project space because that can be share, um, like shareable by others. Um, if you already install it in your home directory, that doesn't matter as well because you can. Um, define where you want to put the software. So even Miniconda is at your home directory, you still can put your so uh, the tools like Python R to your project space. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Okay, so the question is that um, we can actually do module load Miniconda 3 um, to load the uh, module, uh, to load Miniconda 3 installed in Sokai. Um, why do we want to install it? Um, um, reason one, that um, the Miniconda 3 in Sokai is pretty old. So it, sometimes it has some issues in, when installing some of the package, not all of them. Uh, if all of them, then we, we already delete that that guy. Um, and um, reason number two, um, when you do module load, it has the highest um, priority for looking for the program. So Miniconda or Conda is written, is based on Python. So if you um, do module load Miniconda 3, that means you have a Python already loaded. So that Python is gonna be your Python, like always your Python. If you want to use some other Pythons, it will be very difficult. Okay, so it kind of overlap uh, the Python you installed later. 
which you don't want. Um, and third, um, I'm including the installation part because um, if you try to um, use Condor in your personal computer, you have to install it. <laughs> There's no module load. So um, if you are using some other um, platform or, um, or HPC system, then uh, you know how to do it by yourself. Yeah, I have something to oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> makes some great points about um oh you can put it down. I'll just shout it a little bit. Jerry makes some great points about the local install of mini conda. Also to play the other side, the devil's advocate. I would say for 90 plus percent of your conda um environments, the module load will work fine. Where we found it to be issue, whether we found issues in the past have been around R packages. There are some um, one-off, few-off R packages that have some issues with the um, the system mini conda. And so the either singularity containers or a local install of mini conda can mitigate that. So I would say this is handy to know and it's great for um, resolving some issues and great for being familiar with installing locally. But for a lot of people, the module um, load mini conda also works. The one thing I would recommend also is um, for speed and not worrying about um, installing other um, software in your base environment. When you're not running um, a specific conda environment, just deactivate your base environment. So you're just in the system itself. Um, and then if you need a specific environment you've created, just load that environment. But yeah, for many of you, the module load I think works fine. Thanks, this is, yeah. this has this uh, addresses some exceptions. Uh, in the system, uh, the question is whether the mini counter is updated in the system. Uh, it will, but it won't be like as frequent as the official website does. So <laughs> there's so many programs that uh, we cannot like catch up the pace for everyone. That's why we recommend people to install um, by themselves if they can, um, because it's easier for you guys to control the versions and also um, try to test out the uh, different versions of um, programs. Sometimes it can, it may, uh, resolve some bugs uh, related to your projects. Um, sometimes it's not like that. Doesn't matter much, but if it does, then you want to have the best version. It doesn't mean uh, the latest is the best uh, because sometimes uh, your project could last for maybe one or two years. You want to use a frozen version, but um, the system won't think about that. Uh, the admins will like update the um, the entire system regularly. Sometimes um, the old um, package or old software won't work after days. So uh, if you want to reproduce the same work with the same pipeline, with the same version of uh, the programs, it, it's better to um, keep the version or keep the software by yourself instead of using the uh, those ones in the, in the system. No problem. Uh, it's still running, so let's go to the um, slide. Hopefully, we can have finish that. Okay, so um, that's the um, uh, once it's installed. He didn't ask me to. Um, please don't press enter. Um, just wait for them. Okay, so uh, once uh, once it's installed, it will ask you whether you want to initiate um, initialize the uh, mini counter. Um, we're going to type yes. Oh, it's coming out. Okay, so here don't press enter because the default is no. So press yes and enter. Um, so this step will write something into a file, which is this guy. So you can just do more or cat, depending on you. Um, daughter sign home slash dot bash 
R C. So the dot in front of the file name means this is a hidden file. It cannot be seen by LS. So you need some other flag or option to show these hidden files, just like Windows. Um, okay, so you should have everything until here. Um, please ignore these two lines that's by, added by me. And also you should have, have this. Condor initialize, um, condor setup, blah, blah. So this is to, um, to allow you um, start condor every time when you log into the system, okay? So what we need to do now is close this window and reconnect to Sokai again. Um, let me do it. Or you just start a new window to, to connect. Okay. After connecting, you should be able to see a base in the brackets in front of your CWL. Okay, so that, that means your condor is already initialized, is already started every time uh, when you log into the system. And now you are in the base environment. Um, so that actually brings back your question. Um, I don't want to like do export part every time. So you can put into that file, which is shown in the slide. So you can do like echo, um, hello <laughs> every time <laughs> into this. Uh, you, you, you can put echo hello in this file and you will see hello every time printed out when you log into Sokai. <laughs> or you can um, put the export command to here. So next time or every time when you log into Sokai, the path is redefined. So it actually execute this dot bash RC every time. So you can put any command like Python, Perl, or something there. Okay, so the other way, sorry, the other way to initialize or to start Condor is run this command source space dollar home slash dot bash RC. Um, because uh, yeah, because this actually was run was done when you log into Sokai, so it's the same. Uh, it has the same um, result. Okay. So to install program, first you need to create a virtual environment by condor space type create space dash n space and let's say env1 um, so this would be an empty uh, environment it has nothing inside um, it will first try to solving the environment um, because as i said uh, condor is the professional guy it will measure the space for you so this now it's doing that to see whether uh, the tool is compatible. But since it's empty space, so so it, it's done very quickly and um, press enter. Um, okay, so it tells you that the environmental location is here. So, uh, but now it only has some log files inside. Um, okay, now after you create in the environment, um, the next step is to enter the environment or activate. So condor activate EMV1. And after doing that, you can see the base 
changes to EMV1. That means now you are in the environment EMV1. So what you can do now is to install any program. Um, Condor, for example, install dash C, Condor Forge. I'm typing quickly because uh, it takes some time to install. Uh, it will stay there for, for, for minutes. Uh, so Condor install space dash C space. Oh, oh, it's actually pretty quick. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, Condor install dash a uh, space dash C space Condor dash forge dash cow pie. Um, again, let's ask cow to say something. Um, okay, then it will print a lot of stuff. So it will, um, these tools are all everything that it needs to install cow, cow pie. And it tells you that the following new patches, the packages will be installed, so many. And some are libraries, some are um, certificates, and the CalPy is hidden in, a, uh, in this list. Okay. And then press enter. So now it's downloading all of the packages. Uh, let's, um, yeah, if you are you in this um, screen, you can see that it's trying to download Python 3.10.6 because um, to run this cow, cow say or cow pie, you need Python at least, right? So it will, uh, that uh, the counter will, uh, it, which, uh, because counter um, looks for this environment, it found, oh, this is empty. You need Python three point. Uh, you need Python, so it, I will get the Python for you, and um, it will try to check um, different places. Uh, if the command here is dash c condor forge, so this means uh, we will check. Uh, the condor will check this condor forge channel. Uh, it's like uh, condor is going to Home Depot to. <laughs> To look for the stuff for you. Um, there are some other channels like Best Buy uh, for uh, electronic uh, device um, or uh, IKEA for like some other uh, brand, uh, some other brands of, of furniture. So we have different, so there are multiple um, channels. Um, you don't need to worry too much about the channels because um, if you want to install something, just Open your browser and go to Google. Uh, uh, let's say I want to install NumPy and type Conda. And the first link, click on that. So it tells you this NumPy version is 1.23.1. .1, and if you scroll down, it has the command for you. So you just need to copy and paste. And it tells, it includes the channel as well. So you don't need to worry too much about the channel. Um, if, um, okay, let's say, uh, for example, I want a R package, like ggplot2, and the first one, and the version of ggplot2 is 3.3.6. And you can see there are multiple commands. You just need to copy the first one. That's enough. You don't need to worry about the others. So um, you can see um, that means, so this means there are multiple channels have this rggplot2. It's just like, if you want to buy the Apple, you can go to Apple store or Best Buy. So there are multiple channels have the same stuff, but um, you just need to like randomly choose one. Oh, the best is the first one. Usually the, uh, the first one is the best. Yeah. So when we created that environment, which you said it's like an empty environment, right? So does that mean that, and now we're trying to install something on that environment? Right? Exactly. So 
all of these packages already exist somewhere yeah. on Sockai. Uh, no, 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 it's not in Sockai. Uh, oh, the question. The question is whether the um, packages is already in Sockai. No, it's not in Sockai. It's in, um, it's in these channels. Oh, I, I guess my question was, I mean, there's so there's already a Python somewhere. Oh, oh yeah, Sockai, yeah, yeah, right. But yeah. since I'm in this new environment, mm -hmm. is it like a virtual environment where not also I can tell everything from scratch? Exactly. So you have to. Um, you, if you want to, like, because you create a new environment, now the environment is empty and you didn't load any modules. So you didn't uh, use any software like Python 3.8.10, we just loaded uh, in Sockai. So you don't have the Sockai now, uh, you, you don't have a Python now. Um, that's why it cannot find any Python. So it tries to pull out some a Python, the latest Python from the channel and install into your um, environment. So that means, yeah, yes, that you install everything from scratch, but that's actually what the, uh, the beauty of this, because you can control the version. You can specify which Python version you want to have. And um, if the system ha doesn't have that version, then you have to, like, it's easier for you to control the version. Um, and uh, Condor can do this for you automatically. You don't need to worry about that. Um, that me also means if the system updates some software, it doesn't impact your environment because every, you have everything. It's a kind of a standalone. So yeah, and also the, but the downside is that you have lots of files installed in the, in the, uh, in the environment you have generate a huge amount of files. Uh, so there's a lot of redundancy, but it's sure exactly. that things are never gonna break because each thing is exactly what it is. Yes, so you have, for example, um, if you have two pipelines, um, like step one, you need Python 3.8. Step two, you need Python 3.7. Uh, you can build two environments with 3.8 and 2.7. And you activate the first one for the first step, and you uh, deactivate, and then uh, move to the next one for the for the uh, for the next step. So that can like include in your that can be included in your entire pipeline to make everything automatic. I think for a lot of cases, uh, or um, virtual environments can be really handy um, for certain domains um, where people are using a lot of different versions that it doesn't make sense or we can't really keep up with all of the versions of software on Sockeye. Um, this would be, I think the biggest area we've seen this um, sort of related to this morning is TensorFlow and PyTorch. Um, TensorFlow, um, especially there was a year where we went through probably people asking for a half a dozen or more different versions. And um, to constantly update those or add every single version um, can be a lot of overhead for us, where it's easier to create a virtual environment um, that's isolated from the system, download the specific version you need. The channel of Jerry described, you can think of as online repositories where different software packages are stored and then downloaded through Conda. Um, so I think um, that, and then bioinformatics is another example. Um, where you have so many different packages and so many, and they're always evolving and you could have different pipelines strung together. Conda is incredibly popular for that. And Jerry can really speak to that and help you with that. But yeah. um, I think it, it really comes into its own in some domain specific um, use cases like that. Um, yeah. Otherwise, um, the modules or containers with everything kind of pre-built for you can be very advantageous. Yeah, the yeah the difficulty is that um, sometimes your the two the two tools you want to use have different versions of dependencies. They are not compatible with each other, so you cannot build them into one environment or just build it in your like using the global environment of the system. So you have to create two environments and separate them uh, like one in each. Um, okay, so uh, it's already done. And 
Let me get the slide. So after installing it, um, you can actually check. Um, so we installed the version 1.1.5, but if we go back to the counter page, and so this is the version, if you remember, like if you click on files, you can see there are lots of files with different versions, 1.1.0, and you can click on versions to select the versions. So you can see what version is available. That's quite useful because you can specify the versions here if you want to R 3.6 or R 4.2, 4.1, or Python 3.9.10, um, you can specify the versions here. So sometimes, because sometimes the a version is quite um, important to as a dependency for some other tools. Okay. Uh, so um, to once you install it, um, you can type cowpie. Hello, and it comes again. <laughs> so, and you see, I didn't specify like, like export the path because Condor. The professional guy does that for you. As long as you are in the environment, everything is set up for you. And um, to run the job, uh, we're going to touch the first part tomorrow. But if, to run the job, the first thing you need to do is to source your bash rc, dot bash rc file to activate Condor, to start Condor, and then use Condor to activate the environment, env1, <laughs> and then run the program. Um, okay, so if you want to play with with it, um, we have an example script here. You can find it in the, um, in the slide, but I'm not going to touch that. Um, and so um, because Condor generates lots of files, we recommend people to keep as less environments as possible. Otherwise, uh, this like you will find your project space becomes slower and slower. So um, it's better to have the minimal number <laughs> of environments. And sometimes you use this uh, environment for your project. And if your project is done, you don't need that in a short time. You can just archive them. To archive them, you can do this. Conder. EMV. Of course, you have to be inside this uh, environment. Export. So you don't have to follow me. I'm just showing. So this command um, export everything into a YAML file. It's not the real stuff like the packages. It's just the what software is in this environment. What's the version? How did I create it? So it's a very tiny file. You can only five bytes. And if I do cat EMV, uh, oh, it's not five bytes, 849. <laughs> Sorry, it's October 5th. <laughs> okay, so the name, environment name is EMV1. Channels, this, and dependencies, so many packages. Okay, so we have certain um, packages there. Like it has the um, program name, Calpi. It has the version. It also has the like, kind of ID that you can uh, easily find in the channel. So because you know the iPhone can be found in lots of um, uh, lots of places in uh, here channels. Um, but to get the unique one, the, to get the same lot number, you have to go to the same place. So this is the uh, this ID can help you to do that. Um, okay. So uh, if you want to uh, create a new environment with this file, just run this um, command, but I'm not going to run it here. Um, so it can kind of copy and paste the environment but it's not um, 
you need an extra step, which is export this to a, a YAML file and then use that file to do it. Okay, so, okay, so, so there are some best pra practice uh, or tips when you use uh, Condor. So first, uh, remove or archive old environments uh, as frequently as you can um, and add Condor Forge to your default channel. You can just simply Google how to add channel to Condor um, and check the official uh, website um, of the tools and use the ways uh, they recommend. I will show you some use, uh, some examples and check when the package was updated and make sure um, it was not very long ago because, um, because everything is free. So you cannot um, assume people to be like, um, updating their packages um, as frequently as um, they do in their official website. Um, and you can share the counter environment with your team members if you install them in the project space. Okay, so this is how to um, archive, uh, export them into a YAML file and re like remove the environment. Um, this is how to remove it. And so um, this is how to add the add the channel. So condor config um, dash dash add on channels. So um, if you don't add this channel, you can see that um, the R base here. If you run this, the version will be three point something. But if you add this channel, the version will be four point two or four point three, which is the latest version because just like different stores has different like versions of iPhone, you may not you may only be able to find the latest version in in the uh, mobile vendors or, or carriers or the or app store. You cannot find them in some other uh, stores. Um, okay, so um, sometimes uh, it's useful to check the official website of the package. For example, PyTorch. Um, if you go to their website, you can see they actually have this very clear um, description of how to install it. You just need to copy and paste because these programs need the specific version of CUDA, uh, other tools, like in this case, CUDA Toolkit. Um, and the same thing here, TensorFlow, you need to check the versions of CUDA to, to make them match the Python version and also match the TensorFlow version. So it's better to check the, both the website and also the counter um, sites when you try to install something. Um, and um, try to check the latest, uh, the updated time. So the last uploads three months ago, uh, which is not a very good sign <laughs> to you. You hope that, um, should be like a few days or maybe in less than two weeks. Um, uh, I guess people are familiar, uh, bioinformatics people are familiar with uh, Biocounder. So they previously called Biocounder, but now they are called Bioc Manager. Uh, it, if you try to install some um, packages uh, using this Biocounder um, manager, um, for example, D D Sig two you will find that, oh, um, that that's not the, re, um, the latest version. So um, please do check this when this guy was uploaded. So because people are doing that for free, they just volunteer to do that. It doesn't um, guarantee that this is the latest version. Um, in this case, if you want to uh, install the latest version of Bioconductor or Bike Manager, you have to follow their, in, instruction in their official website. Okay. Don't do that in Condor in this case. So Condor is good, but it cannot solve everything for you. Um, okay, so um, if you create the Condor environment here by specifying everything into, for example, the project space, um, then other people can also use the um, the environment. 
So for example, if I install the everything, like copy and paste all of the commands here, then I can activate the counter environment and Jeff can also um, do that same thing. So he, I can use CalPy in that place and Jeff can also use that. So that's, um, that's the benefit of um, installing, uh, creating environments in the uh, in project space. Okay, so uh, sorry, I'm running fast because we are almost uh, run out of time. Um, okay, so there are some other tips. Uh, do not install counter environments in your uh, your batch job because compute node doesn't have internet. Uh, do not set up this variable dollar Python path. Uh, if you don't know what what it is, and just leave it there. <laughs> um, if you are familiar with that, do not touch it because, uh, when using Condor because Condor doesn't use that uh, variable. It, it actually stores every part in their local files. So if you define this, then Condor will get confused and will report error if you try to use Condor. And um, you can actually use pip install when you are inside Condor environment. Um, to install Python package, you can use install packages um, to install R package when you are uh, in Condor environment. Uh, but you cannot use use uh, you cannot use apt or apt get or sudo make install because you don't have the admin power. Okay, so there are some troubleshooting. Oh, let's do this. Okay, so let. Now I'm in um, uh, e EMV1. Uh, you don't need to follow me. I'm just trying to um, show you guys. Dash C, import. So it should report no error. Okay, so but. If I'm load Python and do this again, it says package not found. That's because remember module load has the highest priority. If you load Python, you're actually using the Python installed in the system, but your package is installed in your local Condor directory. So your local Condor environments. So they are using different Python um, um, binary files. That's why uh, you got this error. So when you use uh, Condor, try, to, try not to load any module. You just you stick to the Python. Uh, you just stick to the Condor environments. Um, and sometimes you can see this solving environment hanging there forever and never goes through. Uh, if it doesn't, if it happens like for after a few hours, you still see this, then maybe you want to try some other versions of the program. It's not because uh, the system is down or you have to do some, something wrong. It's just that sometimes the version, that particular version has some issues. So you just change the version, maybe it can work. Um, if you have other like issues, you um, you're welcome to reach out to us, and we can try to resolve. Try try our best to resolve. Okay, so last thing is singularity container. I will try to finish in five minutes, <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, please, uh, I'm sorry if I uh, I'm running too fast in this section. Um, okay, so. Container uh, in this case um, is something that you put every software in a box. And the box is kind of, um, you cannot touch the box unless you have the right tool. Um, the right tool is a local computer with Linux machine. If you don't have that, then you don't, you don't, you cannot open the box. You can use it but you cannot open it to change it. Okay. So the box can be put any Linux uh, operating system, CentOS, Ubuntu, um, Red Hat, doesn't matter. 
And inside box, it can be any dis Linux distribution as well. It doesn't have to be the same um, distribution or same operating system with the uh, um, with Sockai. For example, Sockai has CentOS, but you can make the box make Ubuntu inside the box. Okay. Um, the and also um, now we are using Singularity Container. Um, but they are uh, rebranded to Aptainer. Um, the command is, is almost the same, just, just change the singularity uh, to Aptainer. Um, and to, okay, so to use con uh, singularity container, you need to build a container image, get the container image onto Sockeye and use the container image to call your tools or software. And you can use a container for R, for GPU or machine learning. So to build the container by yourself, you need to put some tools inside, for example, and you need some um, like equipment. Uh, in this case, you need a laptop or your per desktop uh, running Linux operating system. And you have the pseudo admin power to that. Otherwise you cannot open it. So there's some document, uh, we actually run uh, a workshop before. Uh, you can check this link. Uh, we, have, we have the vi videos there um, to show you guys how to um, open the box and change uh, the contents inside. Um, so we're, you're going to, um, so these two places store a lot of containers. You can pull the existing containers to use. Uh, that's the most convenient way. So for example, here, um, if you load, if you do module load, if you do module load singularity and pull, you can pull the Ubuntu container from Docker Hub. And you can, you can also pull um, center OS 7 from Docker and write the write into the local uh, directory. And after you pull it, um, you can run the program by singularity xq. Um, the file you just put from uh, Docker and followed by the program you want to run. For example, in this case is Perl. Um, and you can, if you run this, you can see that if you um, use this one. If you use the container, then you get the, a different version of the Perl than in Sokka. Uh, you can you can copy and paste after the course. I don't have time to show you. I'm sorry for that. Um, and um, this is the use case. Uh, if you want to use the, um, for example, the bioconductor container, uh, the, this you pull out the container from the Docker. This Docker uh, this container already has the bioconductor installed um, and you can run some R, uh, the R script, which I put it in this directory. So you can just copy and paste to play with it. Um, and um, if you want to like install some other programs that is not uh, installed, not installed in this container, you can use singularity shell to um, enter this container but and in, use this file manager to install some R program, uh, R package, sorry, R package uh, into your um, project space. But actually you, you are not, uh, this is not installing in, inside container. It's installing the package in your Sockai space. So you don't you you didn't touch the container itself. You just use it to install our package in your Sockai um, project space. To to change the container, you still cannot do it in Sockai. You have to do it in your local computer. Uh, and this is the same thing. Um, like go pull down the container, uh, which uses TensorFlow, and you shell into the container and you, you make a directory in Sockai and you install it in, the, in Sockai, not the 
not to the container itself. Uh, you can play with it and then see what happened in your directory. <laughs> okay, so if you want to see some details, um, you are welcome to check this link. We have the slides here. We have the um, the the recording here. Yeah, so it's kind of expanding this five minutes to an hour. <laughs> uh, Yes, apologize for that. Okay, so any questions? I guess no questions regarding the singularity container, just the three, the previous sessions. <laughs> yes. I know you can do the same with both, but if you, for specifically for doing things like uh, GPU accelerated learning, installing either TensorFlow or PyTorch, which is like, what a lot of my lab does. Like they only, they literally only do pipe They need like uh -huh. two different type of pipes. Um, <laughs> uh, virtual and virtual and you can. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you can use um, Singularity container. It may need to be modified if you need to install something else. Um, both Conda and virtual and work. If you're using virtual and it's a Python package manager. So, it installs things, like it, uh, but it's a little bit less weighty than Conda. Uh, so the the demo I provided this morning you was with a virtual and virtual environment with PyTorch installed, and as you can see with my blazing 100% utilization, it works. I mean, no, that's all just um, janky code, but virtual and would work for PyTorch um, fine. Singularity containers in the uh, NGC registry that I linked to can also work if you don't want to go through the virtual environment itself. Yeah, just okay. Just to repeat the question: If um um for using PyTorch for um machine learning, uh, whether uh, we recommend um Conda environments or uh, Singularity container, and Jeff just replied uh, the virtual. Env or virtual env is, uh, would be the best because it generates le less files, not that much as Condor does, um, and also you have the flexibility to um, to uh, install other packages in in the um, anytime you want. One other question we had in the chat, which uh, I'll address for those in the room and those that may not have seen the answer in the chat, is tomorrow will we be building on all of this? um for running jobs and parallel computing the answer is no um we're just going to work out of the module system it's easier um right now and uh, it satisfies a lot of requirements so we might just do something simple like a um load python load r or what have you and get you to run a simple job that way so at least you can be familiar with running uh, modules and um, the one other thing i posted in the chat and my horrible writing, watching it from over there is kind of painful. Um, arc.ubc.ca slash docs takes you to our technical user documentation. There's a lot of what we've discussed here, including the bioconductor singularity container that Jerry mentioned. That was written by Eliza. It provides a really great walkthrough of uh, building that container and installing packages uh, for bioinformatics with Oh. It's mirror, so it doesn't work. Oh, it's okay. I put it in the chat. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Perfect. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Thanks for everyone. Um, apologize again for running too fast in the last session. Um, uh, again, if you um, have any questions or if you want to learn more about virtual environment or singularity container, we have uh, the previous workshops covering that. And uh, we have slides and recordings in um, this um, link. If you click on that, you may find them. Um, and, um, and yeah, see everyone tomorrow. Thank you.